Okay, hello everyone, welcome to the video. In this one, I'm going to show you how to track and run depreciation in Excel. So this is good for people who aren't using a software that tracks depreciation internally, something like Zero, where you can set up the fixed asset register and run depreciation straight out of Zero. So if you're running your books in Excel, or if your software doesn't compute depreciation, this is what you'll be doing. Also, if you need to work out depreciation on your personal tax return, you're probably doing it in Excel. And if you just like to do it the old school way, because sometimes when you run depreciation in software, it's all done in the background. You can't really see what's going on, where the numbers are coming from. So if you like to do it the old school way, this is how you do it as well. So first up, we're going to put the name of the asset in the first cell here. We're just going to call it Equipment Z. And we're going to double click on this column here to expand it out. There we go. In the next cell, we're going to put the cost. And we're going to say that this item costs two and a half thousand dollars. Again, we're going to double click on the border of the column here to expand it out. There we go. And it is formatted as a date. So we're going to click on this comma button here and it's going to turn it back into a number. There we go. Now I'm going to input the effective life of the asset. This is how long you expect the asset to be useful to your business. I'm going to right align it and then I'm going to say this is a, an asset that has an effective life of seven years. You can self-determine this but there's also guidelines on what particular assets generally are regarded to have for a useful life that you can use. And I'm going to put the date of purchase which I might actually put next to the name of the asset. So I'm going to highlight all of this. I'm going to go control X and then I'm going to click here and go control V and we're going to move it all over. I need to expand this column out again. And in here, I'm going to put the date that it was purchased, which will be in this example, the uh, 15th of April, 2023. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to put in my headings for the workings of the depreciation. So the first field will be period. Then we will have an opening amount. We will have a depreciation rate. We will have the actual depreciation figure. And we will have a closing amount. Now this is assuming that your asset is 100% business use. If your asset is partially used for personal use, you'll have to pro rata the calculation and remove the personal portion from the depreciation that you claim in your tax return. So it was bought in the 22-23 financial year. So for the period, I'm going to say FY23 for financial year ending 30th of June, 23. The opening amount is the dollar amount that we purchased it for and the rate. Now, the rate is going to depend on whether you are using diminishing value or straight line depreciation. Diminishing value tends to give you higher deductions in the early years and lower deductions in the later years. This is often considered a better way to uh, at least claim depreciation in your, ta in your tax return because it brings the deductions forward into the current year when your depreciation will have a better effect on our, on your finances as it will be in today's current dollars rather than if you push the depreciation out to later years, you're claiming a certain amount for depreciation, but it's gonna be um, a deflated amount after inflation sort of eats away at your deductions there. So generally diminishing value is what a lot of people like to do, but sometimes you'll need to do straight line depreciation, which is also referred to as prime cost. First, I'm gonna show you diminishing value. So the formula that the ATO uses for diminishing value is 200% divided by the effective life. So we're going to go equals two divided by the effective life and we'll hit enter. So that's your rate there, 28%, but we need to convert it to a percentage. We don't have to, but it looks a bit nicer if you do. So we'll click on the percentage button here and that's your number there. 28.6%, we'll just round it to 29 there. The depreciation amount is the opening multiplied by the rate, but not so fast guys. We purchased the asset on the 15th of April. That means for this first year, we can only claim the depreciation 
from the purchase date to the end of end of financial year. So if we purchased it on the 15th of April, that means there were 14 days at the start of April that we didn't have the assets, so there's no depreciation. So in April, there's 30 days in April minus 14 where we don't have any depreciation. We're claiming it for 16 days in April. In May, there's 31 days. In June, there's 30 days. We'll sum that up. So we're claiming it for 77 days. So what you got to do here, we're going to slap some brackets on this. And we're going to apportion it. Multiplied by open bracket, 77 days from here of 365 days in the year. Unless it's a leap year, then it's 366. So our depreciation comes down to 150. The closing amount is the opening minus the depreciation. And the reason I'm using the plus sign here instead of equals, that's just a faster keystroke. When you, you can use plus instead of equals for basic calculations in Excel. And because the plus sign is right next to the number pad, I just do that for ease of entry. Enter. But you can use the equal sign, of course, as well. That's our closing amount. Now for the following financial year, FY24, the closing amount will just, rather the opening amount will be the closing from the previous year. The rate will be the same. The depreciation, I'll drag this down and then we'll have a look at it. The first thing is there's no apportionment in the second year. It'll be claiming the full 365 days. So I'll delete that and hit enter. We'll have a double click on here and have a look at the formula. So it's taking the opening value multiplied by the depreciation rate. That is correct for diminishing value depreciation. Straight line is a little bit different and I'll show you that in a second. So we'll click or we can just go escape there. Closing. We'll drag that formula down to copy it. We'll double click to check it. It is taking the opening minus the depreciation. And that is correct. And I'll put in this cell here. You might just put that in there DV for diminishing value. You can work it out anyway what you're doing. If you ever forget by looking at your formulas, you can see here when you multiplied it or when you divided the effective life by two, that means you're using diminishing value. But I put it up here just in case to make it clearer. So that's basically how you do it. You keep going until you hit your seven years and then the asset is fully depreciated. Now, let's have a look at straight line, also referred to as prime cost. I'm going to delete this. We're going to start again. So now we're, I'll put in S line for straight line. We bought the asset for two and a half. This time the rate will be, instead of two divided by the effective life, it'll be one divided by the effective life. Enter 14%, so it's half the rate of what we had before, it was 29% rounded. The depreciation will equal not the opening rate, but the purchase price. If you remember in the previous example, we were multiplying the depreciation by the opening value. In this one, we're multiplying it by the purchase price. So we click on that and we multiply that by the rate to give us 357. Again, we have to apportion it for the 77 days for the first year. So I'll bracket that multiplied by open brackets, 77 divided by 365, close bracket, enter. Closing value is simply the opening minus the depreciation. And there it is. And if I highlight these two, it should up to add up to two and a half, which it does. Now for the second year, this is where you'll see the difference in computation come into effect. The opening is the same, closing from previous year. The rate is the same. The depreciation, what you can do here, if you drag it down, you see that we've got an error there. And if we double click that, we can see why. It has dragged everything down. If we drag that blue cell up to the purchase price, 
That will be correct. We need to get rid of the apportionment. So I'll delete this because we're claiming it for the full 365 days. I'll hit enter and you've got 357. What you can do as well so that you don't get that error when you drag it down is if we double click on this to see what the formula is doing, the blue cell there, C1, if you click in there and then press F4, you can see these dollar signs came up. It's locked the cell. I'll hit enter. Then if you drag it down, this will now work. We won't get that error. But then we just need to get rid of the apportionment. Double click on there, you can see it is locked this cell to here. So we dragged it down, it's, but this reference has stayed locked on the purchase price, whereas this cell here has been dragged down because this cell here hasn't been locked. So that's a little shortcut there. We can drag this formula down, which we'll copy, and we'll just check that. Opening minus the depreciation equals the closing. And if you do another year, you could almost just drag everything down. Of course, you always want to double check everything. So that's correct. Closing equals opening for the next year. The rate remains the same. Depreciation is the purchase price times 14%, not the opening value, not the opening written down value as it was in the diminishing value example at the top of the video. But because we're doing straight line, it's the rate multiplied by the purchase price. And the closing should just be the opening minus depreciation. There you go. You do that for seven years. It might actually be eight years on your calculation here because remember the first year was only 77 days. So there'll be eight years of calculations here, but it will all add up to seven full years once you apportion the days. And that's it for the video, guys. So it's pretty easy once you have a basic understanding of what the difference is between diminishing value and straight line or prime cost as it's sometimes referred to. And then just checking your calculations in your spreadsheet to make sure that everything is set up and doing what it's supposed to do. Once everything is set up and doing what it's supposed to do, it is very quick and very easy. But you just have to make sure that your formulas are correct. All right, so if you're interested in doing some training, you can head over to our website, qtraining.net.au. We specialize in accounting software. We also do Excel, of course. We can do 30 minute and 60 minute training sessions. We're also rolling out some courses there for self-paced learning. Or if you have any questions, you can hit us up on the email over at our webpage as well. Click on the contact link if you want to send us an email. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Thank you.